Southside rider while she rolling the herb Tired sucking up on the curb Got this feeling to splurge My sole purpose is to give you the word Write these verses with that murder ain't No relation to herbs Switching lanes for that shifting Two fives of shots still grooving this pandemic I just play the cards I'm dealt confident with it Can't take it over this shit Monstrous vision Never temper thoughts I came from poverty stricken One day at a time Can't rush greatness My mind like plush dates 27 laps in this bitch What's up everybody This is Alex from the Fancy Flow football podcast where we talk stats and facts to help you win your fancy football league all right everybody it's week seven we are talking about players that you should be cutting we are in the middle of the season oh man these boys need to get the x some of these people gave me l's this week that's all i gotta say oh some of these people <laughs> yeah and we'll get <laughs> surely out all right so let's start it off um matthew stafford russell wilson I think it's needless to explain why we're there. We're at this point with them. Yep. Um, I cut Russell Wilson myself. Um, I would cut Matthew Stafford too at this point because I think the only people you could trust on um, on LA is probably Cooper Cup and That's Higby. That's it. So I think the maybe hold up too maybe much. Henderson. I don't know yet. He's not even playing that well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not so, as much as he's supposed to be. Exactly. So. That's what I'm saying. It's just a little rough out here um, with those two. And with the, just to go with that, mm-hmm. um, they're basically, they, they, they have, like, they're drafted as top 12 QBs. Yes. Just because of who Matt Stafford's throwing to. And exactly. Russell Wilson. And right. <laughs> Stafford's only had one game mm-hmm. as a top 12. Russell's has two. We're in week seven, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a problem. I can't count on Russell Wilson. I've been trying to vouch for this man. I know you've had him on your team. It's been hard. It stops this season. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> like, stops. this year is the beginning of the end of them old quarterbacks. It gotta be, because mm-hmm. it's Brady. It's Brady's falling off a cliff. Rodgers has Rogers. no help. Matt Ryan fell off a cliff. Um, I mean, I do, Russell I, Wilson's falling off a cliff. I do believe Rodgers, if he gets, I say he need, weapon, he, he don't yeah, got help. Yeah. That's it. That's all it is. He Wilson, I don't know. No, <laughs> no. So, no. Here's no the thing, though. Today. The reason, the reason why Wilson is like, I don't know, is because mm-hmm. you're looking at the Seahawks, and then you're like, Geno's mm, over there doing, doing what he's yeah, doing. Yeah. He's doing his thing. Yeah, so, we had one. Not a good game, I think. Yeah, it was, right like, now, it was week six. Yeah, it wasn't much. Yeah. It wasn't like put his weight. Still won that game. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's, D, Gino doesn't lose a game. Like not not saying that he doesn't lose, but I'm, he doesn't lose yeah. the game for you. Yeah. So that's what I'm telling you right now. That is just going to be the thing that's going to bite Russell Wilson mm. throughout this whole year. Is how good Geno Smith it looks, yeah. and how stupid the Broncos are for making that trade. At this point, you need to trade for, for Geno Smith, not, not no freaking Russ. Nah, nah. <laughs> because, what, they system over there in Seattle is working for Geno. No, no, I'm just saying, like, yeah. just in hindsight, if they're yeah, like, they I, knew. If Geno goes to the Broncos and he sucks the ass just as bad. Yeah, you know? just exactly. Now, now it's week seven. Who knows? Russ Wilson, something might happen. He might play some future and so it might click. Before, you never know. Before I actually cut him, I was going through just some hard time trying to make the decision. I was talking to this man, talking to Will, talking to enough people. I even went on yeah. fantasy um life and put the little post in it and everybody told mm-hmm. me that's an easy drop but drop rust. Like it was just I was making sure that yeah. I made the right choice by dropping rust. Because the mm-hmm. thing is is that mm-hmm. Rust has a very good schedule kind of going forward. Yeah. So that just brings me back to that one point where you got to kind of just treat these QBs as streamer options. Mm-hmm. Um, if you see that they got a good matchup that week and you have and you and you need a QB, Russ ain't a bad person to pick up. But do you want to trust him as your guy? You can't start him until he produces. Period. Exactly. Period. Like um, mm-hmm. consistently. <laughs> yeah. Maybe after the second game in a row. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Then you look at him and see. All right. You know. Yeah, and not against trash teams either. Exactly. You got to perform, man. All right, um, players to cut. Kenyon Drake is on this list. We have differing, differing appearance, um, differing, differing, opinions. differing opinions. Um, the thing is, obviously, like I, um, when you seen that Dobbins went out and on, on IR for another four to six weeks, mm-hmm. you're looking at who takes the next, you know, who who steps up. And the week before, Drake was the guy. Yeah. He stepped up, he balled out. Yeah, all the characters. So it almost makes sense that he would be the guy again, right? Mm-hmm. Wrong. Um, 
Gus Edwards so decided to come back from ACL, fresh off of coming back off of ACL, mm-hmm. and decides that he wants to ball out. Yeah. Which they have him questionable this week. Is it the same? I'm just, just going to ignore it, bro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but so do you want to cut Dobbins? Here's my thing. I mean, I'm not Dobbins. I'm Kenyon Drake. Drake. You got Justice Hill. Mm-hmm. You have Kenyon Drake. Mm-hmm. You have Gus Edwards. I believe they lean with Gus Edwards simply because he knows the system better than them all. Yeah. And he has rapport with, with um, Lamar. Yeah. Um, but he just came off an ACL injury, and obviously Dick Dobbins came off injury, and his knee tightened up on him the other day. So mm-hmm. you don't know how people react to these ACL injuries coming back and playing. So you kind of have to... You, it's not. It's a drop for me only because I, I was lucky to get Gus. Mm-hmm. But if you didn't get Gus... It's a speculative keep. Like, you can keep him for a week or two just to see mm-hmm. if he does cut into some of that production. Yeah. But other than that, I don't know. Um, for, for me, I had I have Kenyon and Drake. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to drop him just because there's no running back death for me. I'm not going to start him because clearly Gus Edwards is the guy for him and J.K. is going to be back in a few weeks, I assume. Now, if Gus get hurts, Kenyon Drake's going to be yeah. the guy. But exactly. He got me .5 this week. Come yeah, on. that was rough. Uh, that was rough. This is the thing. The Ravens, you already know that their games are going to depend on the script, mm-hmm. especially when you got Lamar Jackson who can take off and go for runs whenever he needs to. Mm-hmm. So you essentially got another running back mm-hmm. who can throw. Mm-hmm. Drake had one game already where he balled out, so we can't ignore that game mm. and say that this man needs to be dropped just because uh, Gus Edwards comes in and he balls the following game. Mm. That could have been because of this game script. You never know what it might be. And with running backs being in committees in most teams now in t- today's league, if you have the room, you got to keep that man, Ken Drake, because at the end of the day, he's still young enough Mm-hmm. He has talent. He's a good pass catcher back. So they can use him. And if he gets put on the waiver wire, I guarantee you somebody else will snatch him up. It's possible. If they, mm-hmm. if they have their space, they'll snatch him up. Mm-hmm. The Ravens have the best offense for running back. One of the best offense for running backs. Mm-hmm. They're going to eat. Yeah. Their running backs are going to do well. So when you get players who... Like, if you have a player that plays for a team that passes the ball a lot, and they're high in pass attempts and high in uh, passing touchdowns and yardage, that's the guy you want to look for. Mm-hmm. That's why you need to try to keep whatever running backs from the Ravens that you can. Yeah. I think um, Lamar just kind of got to get back to elevating his game a little bit. He kind of dipped off. Mm-hmm. But once Lamar gets back up there again, I think that the, that run game is going to be potent again. Yeah. Um, next person we got Jay, um, Chase Edmonds. How that's, do you that's feel? That's a no-brainer right there. You cut in or you keep most of the starter, man. Listen, first of all, <laughs> I think the running back situation over there in Miami is going to be rough this season simply mm-hmm. because of the fact that they're passing. Mm-hmm. They're a pass first team. But they do need to. They, they do want to establish the run. They want to establish the run, but it ain't happening. You got Mostert and you got Chase Edmonds. They do not have the guy. Yeah, I agree. So, <clears throat> if there's a better option out there on the waiver wire to add to your team, go get them and drop Edmonds all day long. Um, because nine times out of ten, if you're going to start Edmonds, especially on a bye week situation, you probably might do. Mm-hmm. So I I have a flip to that, right? Um, I think I agree with you. But I do think that at the same time, um, Edmonds is a product of Tua. I think we didn't pay him to be bell cow running back. We paid him to catch pat- on passes out of the backfield. I think when we went away from Tua because of his injury, I think we went more so run predicated. Not saying that um, Monster outperformed him in the pass game, because he really didn't do that much passing. He could catch, but he doesn't catch as good as Edmonds. Mm-hmm. Clearly, he runs better than Edmonds. So I don't 
think that it's, it's almost a situation with like um, Washington with Brian Robinson and Antonio Gibson. Like, yeah, Brian Robinson is a starter. <clears throat> yeah, he's going to get a lot of touches. But a lot of times as a running back, if you can get passes out of the backfield and make plays off of that, you get more points off of just catches and, and, and yards off of that than trying to run and take carries and bust for, um, runs for 10 yards. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You get a catch, that's a point. True. So, but even then, when Tua was playing before he got hurt, mm-hmm. Edmonds wasn't first, out I would say he, I'd say the first two games he had his best games. There First was, two. There were there were there was a week where he balled. There was a week where Mostert balled. Mostert well, game three was Bills, right? That's when the yes. switch started. Yes. That's when the switch started because Mostert got them on the run. Like he started the offense. Like we were we weren't moving, and we needed Mostert to. We we made a change at halftime after Tua came back. Mostert came in. The tide changed. So and I, the first week. Edmonds had 10.50 points. Mm-hmm. Second week, he had 5.10. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. was the week that Mostert had, I think, 10 points or something like that. Yeah, a little more Mr. Ravens. Oh, it was the Ravens that that happened then? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then maybe I mixed up then the Ravens and Bills. He had 15.70 against the Bills. Okay, I mixed it up. 10 against the, <clears throat> against the Bengals. And then 0. Yeah, point he, 10 against the Jets. He fell mm-hmm. off the cliff. 5.10 against the Vikings. 1.70 against the Steelers. Yeah. And now they play the Lions this week where they should eat. So yeah. if they don't ball out, if Evans does not ball out this week against the sorry ass He Lions, is surely a drop. <laughs> I said it, I think, first week. I always like Mostert more than Edmonds. I just like his athleticism more. Edmonds had a bad week this week. He had some catches he dropped, yeah. which is unlike him. Yeah. So if you have him on your team, Okay, I mean, running back is Sahara Der- Desert right now, yeah, yeah, especially with sure. people getting hurt. But I'm not starting Edmonds until he gets back into the group of getting at least 10 points yeah. consistently. And, My, and, it's, and it's matchups and too. And even then, so. you aiming low because yeah. you want more than 10 points from your Yeah, this back. is a bye week running back. Yeah, so, but I would also say that um, we paid him for two years. So I think that we're going to try our best to get him back in there. I, Most are just a one-year rental, even though he is outperforming it. Mm-hmm. So I, I do like that. We're, we'll probably still go with Mostert, but I do see us trying to get um I see our system able to use both. Yeah, they can. Yeah. But we'll see. Um, but definitely give him after the Lions. If you don't see any type of production out of Edmonds from the Lions, it's a safe drop. Yeah, that's that's make room for something. Better. <laughs> yeah. That's scary times if he ain't mm-hmm. balling against the damn line. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're the worst defense in the league. Yeah. Um. All right. Next person, Jeff Wilson. He is a candidate to possibly be cut. Let me phrase this mm-hmm. properly. Only reason I say this is because obviously CMC just came to the Forty Niners. Yeah. Um. Elijah Mitchell was still the lead back. He's on his way back shortly. Um. But I guess there's room to tread light on that statement only for the fact that there's there's injuries on that team that are a frequent kind of thing. Is all of Elijah Mitchell scheduled to come back soon? After week ten, I think After the week, week I think the bye week is is week nine. So I think he was scheduled to come back week eight, and then they're gonna probably wait wait till after week nine and play in week ten. Okay. Okay. But. He's, he would just serve as the backup to CMC. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I think that the one thing is, is that Jeff Wilson, the reason I will give you credit in, in not wanting to drop Jeff Wilson is I think that when it comes down to um, the talent in San Francisco, mm-hmm. all of their running backs usually are good, right? Mm-hmm. But he's usually the, always the one that stays the healthy the longest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Usually, yeah. right? I'm, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm correct, usually for the years that he's been there, he's stayed the healthiest the longest. I mean, generally, they running backs get hurt. What, whatever running back is over there. Yeah, I'm just saying. Like, hurt. I'm just saying. He, he's usually <coughs> the healthiest one yeah. from what I remember yeah. Yeah. for the last couple of years. So um, it's, it's a drop for me after week 10 and if Elijah Mitchell can prove he stays healthy. CMC too? Well, CMC, yeah. in the same boat. 
But I think the the good thing for CMC going there is the amount of ways that they will find a way to run Debo, to run him, to flex him out at receiver, um, use him at receiver, bring in another running back. They're going to... Chow Shanahan is, is a genius when it comes to this whole thing. So I think that they will find ways to preserve Christian McCaffrey and not bell cow him to death, but they will find a way to get him the ball. But then when you say that, that just ties into them needing other running backs who are going to have to get some touches, who they're also going to have to find looks for, who they're also going to need to do well so that McCaffrey is not overused. So... You I, need to keep depth when it comes to those running backs on the 49ers. I wouldn't be surprised if Elijah Mitchell takes a back seat even when he comes back. It's it's possible that Jeff Wilson could stay up, so that's a good point. That is a good point. Um, Jeff Wilson could take the backup role versus mm-hmm. Elijah just because of health and durability. Um, I was going to say that I do think that they'll find a way to just start messing with defenses and – Try to like get Elijah, not Elijah. Try to get CMC in in um, Debo in the backfield a lot and mm-hmm. just confuse them. Yeah, and I think that that's going to mess up a lot of people. It's like we're going to flex out him and bring Debo in as a running back. Bring CMC as a running back, <laughs> Debo at receiver. Like it, the only thing I'll say that's limiting the 49ers right now is Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. I actually think that getting CMC makes Jimmy Garoppolo better, though. Much better. Because he's it's a lot of dumb, dumb But the only balls. thing I'll say about that is Jimmy Garoppolo is he is not a scrambler. Yeah. So if they put that pressure on him, is he going to be able to get out of the pocket and make the plays to get it to his running back? Well, you, when you have you, the league is changing now. Mm-hmm. The league is leaning more towards these run, these quarterbacks who have the ability to scramble and, and, yeah, and for sure. extend time and make plays. Mm-hmm. And you're starting to see quarterbacks like Tom Brady, uh, Matt Ryan, uh, you know, certain certain quarterbacks who typically stay in the pocket, they drop back, they throw the ball. That's starting to go out the window now. Mm-hmm. And you elevate your team when you have that ability to scramble. That's why when you look at Josh Allen, the mm-hmm. man is balling. Jalen Hurts, he's balling. Mm-hmm. Lamar Jackson, balling. Daniel Jones, balling. Why? Because their ability to scramble and then extend plays. Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't have that. Yeah. He doesn't have the O line good enough to stay in the pocket. Yeah, I, I think um, they would have to um, scheme the running back to just do like swing routes. Um, that way, if it does come, it's more of a just like it's, he's he's mm-hmm. on the side. You just got to lead him there real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he doesn't. He's not a scrambler, so um, that doesn't help the run game. Where having somebody like Jalen Hurts and having weapons like CMC and, and Debo, if you decide to do read options, mm-hmm. he would destroy them with those mm-hmm. re- weapons. Mm-hmm. Um, but it could work how it's working for the Jets. What, like with Brees Hall and Michael Carter? Mm-hmm. They were doing a lot of that with Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson could scramble, though. He's <coughs> Johnny Manziel-esque. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, not, he's not your mold, but he's not your he's stationary. Not your yeah, he's yeah. Not. He, he definitely will make a move. All right, um, Robert Woods. I just think... Um, How disappointing, man. It's... Dude, it's a wrap, dog. I, and, and maybe it's a factor yeah, of Tannehill. Robinson too. You see yeah. how Allen Robinson yeah. got most. A lot of people dropped him. Yeah, yeah. same you thing. You can't have him. You just can't have them on your team right nope. now. Yeah, and it's like sold. They were sold high at the beginning of the season. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you know, we we had AJ Brown on that team before, mm-hmm. and he was produ- producing. So you're thinking Robert Woods is a good player, so yeah. therefore he would produce. I'm blaming Tannehill, but. I could be, I, I could just be thinking, I could be blaming Tannehill and it could be Robert Woods. I don't know. I think it's the whole offense except Derrick Henry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> honestly, the whole I mean, offense is just If you crap. got King Henry, then. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not really yeah. messing with anybody on the Titans. Mm-hmm. Um, Hunter Henry, he had um, two good games, week five, week six. Mm-hmm. Other than that, it's really been, eh. And I I don't know, because, um, you know, obviously they paid Hunter Henry and John and John o. Smith mm-hmm. money to be there, thinking that, you know, they could have went back to the old Patriots days with Hernandez and Gronk. Mm-hmm. Um, but this isn't those days. Yeah. Mac Jones is not Tom Brady. Zappi is not <laughs> Tom Brady. He's good now, but he's not Tom Brady. And it's just, 
I think we're um, sometimes these teams get stuck in trying to recreate something that worked before, mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't always work that way. Yeah. So Hunter Henry, you could let go for sure. I know tight ends rough, but when you see those two games, you're like, oh, he had good games, but then it's like, can you trust the Patriots? They're good. The only person I the two people I can see consistently getting the ball on the Patriots offense Jacoby. is Jacoby Myers and Ramondre Stevenson. Yeah. All, all day. Yeah. That literally only mm -hmm. those two are the only people who are consistently mm -hmm. catching the ball. Yeah. So I can't I can't tell you anybody on the Patriots that are that is consistently balling out. So alright, let's move on to the players on the hot seat. I got AJ Dillon for you. On the hot seat. Green Bay's on the hot seat. Green Bay is on the hot seat. <laughs> it ain't looking good. This this something should have been traded. Mm -hmm. By now, I think I think they should get Elijah Moore because they need. Please do it. <laughs> See, but the Jets aren't gonna get let go of Elijah Moore they're no not, more. They're not gonna let him go. Yeah, I'm telling but you. But with uh, who just got hurt over there? Is Brees Hall? And Corey, Corey, and, and Brees. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, Corey so they Davis need injury, it. Mm -hmm. Maybe Elijah Moore. I mean, I'm tripping. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah Elijah Moore yeah, will Corey step in. But here's Warriors. the thing, right? This is going back to what I told y'all when I told you that Joe Flacco ran that offense better. I, I said the same thing. Yeah. I told, I told Joe this, Flacco ran that offense I told better, bro. I, What episode was that? I don't remember. It was, it was one of our was first two. few episodes. Yeah. I told y'all, Joe Flacco was showing everybody, I'm still here, goddammit. Yeah. And he was running that offense better than Zach was. Because I'm telling you right now, we can't name... Who he's throwing to right now? Because obviously Elijah Moore wasn't getting the ball. Mm -hmm. Garrett Wilson fell off. We could name Brees Hall, <laughs> <laughs> Michael Carter. Some games. Yeah, you're but right. Not, now they lost Brees Hall, and now they're gonna have to go back to the receivers. And mm -hmm. I don't know if, if Zach Wilson becomes yeah. deadly like that because Brees that. Hall made a difference. Mm -hmm. Brees Hall was catching it. He was running it. Mm -hmm. He was doing. He was doing what JT did for the Colts last year. Yeah, pretty much. So he. AJ Dillon got to get right because yeah. the thing is we've been hoping for this renaissance of the of the backup running back committee mm -hmm. running back over here trying to figure out how to be a fantasy relevant running back throughout the season mm -hmm. and it's like he has a game then he trash then he trash and he trash has a game and then I mean, having a game is only is is, is saying not saying much because now I want to remind y'all that last season, I mean this is this is pretty typical mm -hmm. with this with AJ Dillon. This ain't nothing new mm -hmm. because last season when Dillon started to really ball was when Aaron Jones was out, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate that you have to wait for an Aaron Jones injury right. for it's that handcuff situation. But it, it is. But he but once he becomes the number one, he's a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is definitely a problem. It's just the same way. Yeah. So I mean, but the but if you're not looking at an Aaron Jones injury, then you look at Aaron um AJ Dillon as a um touchdown dependent person, and, and then you're on that struggling offense for mm -hmm. um Green Bay, who can barely pass the ball to a receiver. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's just rough all and on all accounts over there. So <clears throat> he just they, AJ Dillon is a handcuff. Mm -hmm. AJ Dillon is a person that you. But he's a he's a top. He, he's a top mm hand -hmm. If if you put AJ Dillon on the waiver wire, somebody's gonna get. Yeah, it. for mm -hmm. sure. If it ain't the guy who owns Aaron Jones, I mean, somebody wait for Aaron Jones to get hurt. Exactly. Because it might happen. <clears throat> there, mm -hmm. it's it's yeah, it's players out there that is guaranteed drop drops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. AJ Dillon ain't one. You, I just yeah no, but he's not on the he's not on the drop. He's a player on the hot seat. But he, but I think he gonna sit on that. Seat, but I yeah. think the reason why he is on that hot seat is because what they hyped his value to be before the season. Mm -hmm. They didn't hype him as just a as a running back by committee or a, as a handcuff. They said that he is. They said him and Aaron Jones are one A one B. Mm -hmm. Like they're both that good. So they made it seem as if like he's getting the ball and Aaron Jones is getting the ball. Yeah, but so I, I think that's where a lot of people like you know the reason why I say talk. that yeah it was all talk but you remember when something like that worked back in the day it was Tennessee Titans you had Chris Johnson and Lendale White twenty five number twenty five but he was a bigger running back mm -hmm. smash and dash mm -hmm. that's what they called him so basically they both 
did everything. It was just like when you had two yeah, running backs that complement. Yeah, mm-hmm. those are a really good to, um, tandem too. So not everybody gets tandems like that. Mm-hmm. So, but obviously they could be that. It's mm-hmm. just I think they play too similar because Adrian Dillon is huge. Like mm-hmm. he's not no small dude. Mm-hmm. All right, my favorite person that I need to discuss today. <laughs> Anybody out here that knows who I'm talking about feels me. We pretty much killed our whole draft, mm-hmm. drafting this man. This man, I'm not going to say he's trash, because he's, 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 he's not trash. He ain't built trash. I'm just going to sit here and direct my frustration to the Falcons organization. Yep. First of all, this is the reason why y'all lost um, to Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, and he came back on y'all. Y'all are trash, okay? Yes. How do you have... A generational tight end and can't get him the ball. Mm-hmm. All right, Drew Brees didn't have no big arm back in the day, bro. But you wanna know what he did to friggin' Jimmy Graham? He threw that thing. Do right, yeah. Jump ball, bro. And Tom- he was who? <laughs> we done. Jeremy Shock. Jeremy Shock. Jeremy and I'm trying to tell you, so it's like, it, it's crazy to me that it's like you're an offensive coordinator. Mm. You have Kyle Pitts as your tight end. You got Marquise Mariota as your quarterback. No, which is fine. It's fine. I understand that. Mm-hmm. But you're trying to tell me that as an offensive coordinator, you're not telling your quarterback, yo, man, you, you got to get this. Bro, he but, got three catches for nine yards. Bro. But you know what? He's getting the targets. Three catches for nine he's yards. He's getting the targets. So is it the offensive plays that he's not getting open? That's what I'm saying. As an offensive because coordinator, I've he needs games, to fire himself. I've seen games. Kelsey's open every play. And they know they're supposed to guard him, so... I mean, yeah, is. I feel you, but... So, I don't know. I think that Marcus Mariota puts too much of the offense on himself. Mm-hmm. Um, he obviously can run it in there. That's where his value's been coming from mm-hmm. lately. He's not passing a whole lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, he gets some passes, but it's never Drake anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's also not Kyle Pitts. So, mm-hmm. it's like, at this point... Mm-hmm. I'm getting tired of looking at Marcus Mariota and Kyle Pitts. So Kyle Pitts will no longer be a starter on my team. You can't. Um, and you can't drop him. No, I'm no, 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 no. Don't I'm drop him. No, 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 no. I will pick him up <laughs> <laughs> and never <laughs> let him go. <laughs> oh, you, yeah, you listen. Well, yeah, you that would work out for anybody that picks him up mm-hmm. if, um, because of keeper league. Mm-hmm. But um, yes, um, I'm not dropping him. But what I'm getting at is is that. I will not make that mistake again and draft Kyle Pitts in the third round. There's only two, maybe three, but two tight ends you draft that early right now. I know, but he was supposed to be the next. Nope. He was supposed to be the next. Not playing for the Falcons. After last year, I lost a little faith. I I mean, this year you thought, but dang, man. like It's the whole Falcons It's Marcus thing. Mariota, it, bro. It might ch- maybe it'll change when Cordell comes back because their offense opens up a little more. Maybe, maybe. So, we'll um, but two more weeks. I need I need Ritter to come step in. That's it. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. Yeah. The first thing that needs to happen is Mariota is in Atlanta now, mm-hmm. so he might need to change his name to Marquise. <laughs> and maybe he'll start balling. Marquise in Hot Atlanta. Yeah, Marquise in Hot Atlanta. Marquise Mariota. Maybe if he changes his name, he'll start balling. And then get a boosty fade. Get a boosty fade. Something. <laughs> I did. Go hit up little Chris and then yeah, go little Chris, oh, Migos, we'll something. See Migos or something. <laughs> I ain't know. He needs something, bro. Something. All right. Um, only player that you can in my mind that is somebody that people are probably itching to drop, but I'm gonna implore you not to. And trust me, I want to drop him too. Mm-hmm. But Romeo Dobbs, he has the volume. He has. Other injuries on that receiver core. I mean, they got mm-hmm. Sammy Watkins back, but Sammy Watkins is cooked. And Alan Lazard cooked. is... Yeah, mm-hmm. he's cooked. And Alan Lazard is hurt. They, they, they think it's his shoulder. They don't want... They, they're not talking too and much you know, about it. I don't it. think Alan Lazard is the guy, man. I don't think so, too. I, I think that's think why they want guy. Romeo Dobbs to get right. I think they obviously want Wat, um, Watson, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think they want him to be the guy as well. But he hasn't shown, like, yo, I'm... Mm-hmm. I'm game breaking talent. Romeo Dobbs has, but at the same time, I don't know if it's just been the quarterback cornerback matchups mm-hmm. or just whatever it is. But this man is not catching the ball, and I know Aaron Rodgers is frustrated. You you heard the, you heard the mic when he said <laughs> on there he is what frustrated. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. 
um, just hold on to that man. Yeah, I, I wouldn't drop him. I mean, he's he's gonna because I'm telling you right now that that vol- the thing is is what I'm gonna hope for in the case of the Packers is positive regression. They already mm-hmm. suck. They regressed. Yeah, they regressed. Regressed. They it's were just, winning at first. No, they regressed even then when they yeah. started this game mm-hmm. this year, bro. It's, it's not they just, look. They found, a, they way found a way to win. Aaron Jones is starting to get his thing. Yeah, I'm just saying, but they've they have regressed as a whole. Yeah, um, I mean we halfway through the regular season, so mm-hmm. yeah. So they what I'm hoping for is positive regression, and Aaron Rodgers starts finding a a, a groove with yeah. this group. He has to obviously mm-hmm. learn how to be a better teacher to these guys, mm-hmm. and once he does that. I think that you'll see the Romeo Dobbs, maybe Watson, mm-hmm. and obviously Alan Lazard will eat a little bit off of that. Mm-hmm. So keep so Romeo. Like, is Cobb out? Rest yeah, of the not year? I don't think rest of the not season, rest of the but year. I think he's just out. Yeah. Yeah. So. We'll see, man. Thank you for watching the Fantasy Flow Football Podcast. Make sure you tune in for more fantasy football analysis. Like, subscribe, and follow for more content. I'm better to drive, can't stop going, catching all these blessings open field like I'm T.O. It's free flowing. I'm better to drive, can't stop going, catching all these blessings open field like I'm T.O. It's free flowing.